Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Wendy Custer. I'm here to encourage your hearts and equip you to encourage others. Today, we're going to talk about strengthening and encouraging yourself in the Lord. I recently posted a video asking the question, are you an encourager? I'll link that video right up here so you can watch it later. Today, I wanted to reiterate a point I made in that video, which is just how important I think it is to be able to strengthen and encourage yourself in the Lord. There is an account in 1 Samuel 30 where David was said to have been greatly distressed. I think that description is an understatement since he found himself in the situation where his own men were threatening to stone him to death. But the verse ends with these words, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. What an amazing example David sets for us in this passage when we find ourselves discouraged and distressed. Now, of course, we know that it is truly God who does the work of encouragement in our hearts through his power and his spirit. But what I believe this passage is truly telling us is that David knew how to seek and access and apply the encouragement of the Lord. I wonder, do we know how to do this? Do we know how to seek and access and apply the encouragement of the Lord when we find ourselves discouraged and distressed? Are we, like David, able to encourage ourselves in the Lord? We must be able to encourage ourselves in the Lord before we can encourage others. We have another amazing example in Matthew in the account of Jesus walking on the water. The passage is Matthew 14, 22 through 32, and I'll link the full text in the description below. But I want to encourage you, if you have a physical Bible, take it out and read the story there. Feel the pages turn, read the full chapter, make some notes there. Let me begin by setting the stage for us. A lot is happening here. John the Baptist has just been beheaded. People are flocking to hear Jesus preach. And he has just fed the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And I think I have a lot going on. Just after Jesus feeds the crowd miraculously, my Bible actually says immediately. Jesus has the disciples get into a boat and head across the lake. And by the way, this is a very large lake. And Jesus went up on the mountainside to pray. A storm arises later that night, and the boat is way out of the lake, and it's tossed to and fro with the wind and the waves of the storm. Eventually, Jesus went out to meet them, walking on the water. I don't think we should miss that Jesus sent the disciples out onto that lake that evening, knowing full well that a storm would come up. And he let them experience that storm for a while before he went to them. Part of encouraging ourselves in the Lord is acknowledging his sovereignty. He knows all and he has authority over all. Here is point number one of strengthening and encouraging yourself in the Lord. When you find yourself in a storm, discouraged and distressed, you can remind yourself that Jesus is not surprised by your storm. We ask ourselves, why would Jesus allow them to experience this kind of difficulty? I believe he was using this situation, this storm, to teach them how to trust him and how to encourage and strengthen themselves in the Lord. When the disciples see Jesus, they don't immediately recognize him. They think he's a ghost. And here is another lesson for us. In order to encourage and strengthen ourselves in the Lord, we must learn to see Jesus in the midst of our storm. The Bible tells us that God will not leave us, that he is always with us. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus sees and hears their fears, and he gives them a response that's helpful to us in verse 27. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. 
Let's pause and camp out in that verse for just a bit. First, let's look at those three individual phrases and their particular order. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. The two bookend phrases, take courage and don't be afraid, are imperatives. Jesus isn't asking or suggesting here. He is telling them what they must do and what we must do in order to strengthen ourselves in him. Let's take a look at that first phrase. My version in the NIV says, take courage. And some other versions may say, have courage. So I looked up the original Greek in the lexicon. Do you know how to do that? Maybe I'll do a video on that another time. And here is what it says from the Strong's Concordance. The word is tharseo, and it means to be of good courage. It's important for us to notice this is a verb. We'll come back to that in a bit. It's from the root word thar, and it means bolstered because warmed up, emboldened from within. Literally, it means to radiate warm confidence because it's warm hearted. Now, we discussed this in my Sunday school recently, and it made our class giggle because I likened this to my hot flashes that I experience. I'm thinking of how God warms our heart from within, and that warmth, that courage radiates outward from that. When he infuses his strength inside of us, it causes our faith to radiate out from us. So taking courage or having courage is simply showing that we are living out the inner confidence that is spirit produced. Now, this may make it seem like we don't have a thing to do here, but let's not forget the word tharseo is a verb. Jesus warms up our courage from the inside, but we must choose to take hold of it. And that is what it means to take courage or to have courage. The third phrase, do not be afraid, is similar, but slightly different. Tharseo is a positive command, do this, but the following imperative is a negative command, don't do this. The word for be afraid is phobeo. It means to be struck with fear or seized with alarm. I don't know about you, but I can think of times that my fear or my anxiety has caused me to feel absolutely paralyzed. And this reminds me of the passage in Philippians that says, do not be anxious for anything. It's wonderful to tell someone what to do or what not to do. But the power in this verse lies in Jesus's explanation for how we can encourage or strengthen ourselves in him. Sandwiched between the two imperatives, we find the answer. It is I. It's Jesus. He calls their attention to him. Take courage. Look to me. Don't be afraid. Look to me. Listen to the rest of Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything. That word anxious is merimneo, and it means divided or distracted. But in everything every situation, every storm, by prayer and petition, looking to him, seeking him, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Could there be any better encouragement? If we are to be able to do what Jesus is saying, to take courage and to not be afraid, we must keep our focus on Jesus. And just to be certain that his disciples and us got the point, he gives them an example right before his eyes as Jesus invites Peter to step out of the boat and to stand on top of the water with him. Is Peter able to walk on the water? Is he able to do the impossible? Yes, as long as he keeps his focus on Jesus. But of course, like I often do, Peter takes his focus off of Jesus and puts them on his circumstances, the wind and the waves of the storm. Remember the word for anxious in Philippians, maremneo? Peter got distracted. And then, phobeo, he seized in fear and he began to sink. 
but God. Jesus takes his hand. Peter looks to Jesus once again, and he is saved. Wow, keep your focus on Jesus. Remember how Jesus is the focus in the center of those statements. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Center of our hearts. Center of our minds. Center of our focus. When we have him in the center, he warms up our courage from the center and it radiates out from us. That warmth, that courage keeps us from seizing and freezing in fear. When we are tempted to seize in fear, like Peter on the water. We are simply to turn our focus back to him. He is always the center. But this storm, look to Jesus. But my job, look to Jesus. But my kids, my marriage, my health, look to Jesus. Remind yourself that God is not surprised by your storm. See Jesus in the midst of your storm. Keep your focus on Jesus. Just like David, we can take courage, look to God, and not be afraid. We can strengthen and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Just like Peter, when we take courage, look to God, lose courage and get distracted, we can look to God again, and He will encourage us. Friends, I don't know what storm you are currently facing. I don't know what impossible situation you might find yourself in, but I do know this. God is with you. He is more powerful than your storm. You can look to him and find the courage to weather the storm. I love this lesson, and I love how God uses his word to teach us how to strengthen and encourage ourselves in him. If you found this encouraging, I hope that you'll share this video with others who could use that same courage. I hope that you'll subscribe and like. That really does help this channel, and it helps more people to hear this message of encouragement. I hope that you will take these lessons and use them today to strengthen and encourage yourself in the Lord. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, encourage one another daily.